Hello everyone, welcome back to another tutorial video in our tutorial series about Spring Boot with Angular. In this video we are going to be continuing on our previous uh, task which was to extend this uh, application that we have that it's able to refresh on its own. For example, you may remember that we had a problem that if you would uh, create a vehicle and submit it, that this list would not update. Or if you would delete a vehicle, um, it would also not update. You would actually have to refresh the page to get it to work. The way we are going to handle this is we are going to be using a WebSocket. We are going to use a SockJS to actually enable us to send some events via the WebSocket from the backend to our frontend and then make frontend do some actions when it receives a certain message. So we are going to be able to subscribe to different topics uh, and handle different messages that we have. I already have it implemented and the reason for that is because I already have a tutorial on this. It just wasn't not, it was just not uh, with Angular, so it was just with plain JavaScript. So the basics are still the same, but yeah, I didn't want to type it out and uh, waste your time. So I'm just going to guide you through it. The code for it, it will always be on GitHub, so you can just take a look at there. And I will also link the video where I uh, explain in more details how are we going to handle the, the application and what you need to do to set up the WebSocket. So let's just take a look at and uh, see how it works. Let's create some vehicle. Let's name it whatever. Uh, submit this and you can see that the vehicle immediately appears here. And then if I would delete one of these, for example, this one, you can see that the list appears uh, so the list refreshes it on its own if we open the developers console you can see that we are getting some messages and that it's uh, on a destination topic vehicle and with some additional information uh, so let's take a look at our backend first what we need to do there to be able to implement this so let's uh, go to intellij and um, my application is already running and if you look at the git changes you can see that we have some changes here so let's take a look at the ones that are uh, interested in backend the first one that you want to do is you want to add to our build cradle so in the modules backend you want to add this uh, dependency so we want to uh, use the web socket from the spring boot starter package once you have that refresh your gradle so just this tab here and this button here so you want to reload all of the gradle projects so this would download the dependency and you're able to use it and that's the build gradle uh, one the next one what you want to do is you want to create the websocket configuration class this class is located inside of our configuration fo folder so where the application config is but it's just a different configuration so a different class uh, it must be annotated with at configuration and also with the enable WebSocket message broker annotation. The name of the class doesn't really matter, so I just gave it a WebSocket configuration class and it has to implement this interface. So this interface helps us, helps us out to configure uh, some of the things that we need. The first thing you want to is configure the message broker. So you want to add uh, destination prefixes. So all of our topics are going to have this destination and also we have the application destination prefix which is just vs you can uh, set this whatever you want so it doesn't really matter the next thing you want to be able to is uh, to register the stomp endpoints um, so i'm adding a new endpoint again the name doesn't really matter so you can name it whatever you want so spring boot angular uh, minus websocket you can put here whatever you want and also allowed origins uh, for us it's the local host 4000 so uh, and we have to say that it's uh, with sockjs because that's we are, what we are going to be using um, in production you might want to make this a bit more flexible so that you have um, uh, also other origins that you want so you want to be able to handle it in the when you deploy it from one jar file so you're not accessing from 4000 4200 you want to be able to handle that but that's a topic for a different time for now we're just setting everything up okay so with the configuration being done you're basically um, set to go next thing you want to do is you want to create your websocket service so it's just uh, like a helper service that helps you um, reuse some of the code so that you don't have to type it, type it out so i created it in the service package and its um, name is whatever you want important thing is that you annotate it with uh, add service and also you need to inject this uh, simple messaging template the messaging template is used to send the messages that we want 
So here you can see that we are having a method called send message, which just takes a topic suffix. So uh, something that we append to this uh, prefix here, topic, which is again what we configured uh, here. And then you say convert and send. And of course you can put some payload. For us, we don't have a payload in this case. A payload would be something that you would want to send to the front end. For example, imagine the, in case of the, this list. When you create a vehicle, maybe you want to send the entire list to the front end via uh, stomp. That would be kind of a bad thing because you can have um, a lot of data there and you don't really want to send it there. What you want to do is maybe just trigger the refetch uh, via HTTP. So, and then you don't need a payload. But in some cases you may, may want a payload. Like if you send a message, for example, uh, you want to send a notification number so that you know how many messages you have or something like that. I mean, there are different cases which you can do, but in our case, we don't need it. So a payload is just whatever. Okay, now let's see where we are using this message. So uh, in the abstract cradle service, which is our main service here, is I created a method called uh, notify frontend. So it uh, gets the entity topic, which is an, again another method, I will explain it, and it just checks it if it's set, and if it's set, it just um, uses the WebSocket service to send a message. The WebSocket service is injected here uh, via the property injection, so I didn't, do not use the constructor injection here. And also you can see that I created an abstract method which returns a type string called get entity topics. So this is something that should be implemented in all of our methods, in all of our services uh, that are using this one. So in our case, the vehicle service. And there uh, you just override it and you give it some topic. In our case, it's just a vehicle. You can do whatever you want. You could use the uh, vehicle service class name, the vehicle class name, um, so the entity class name or whatever. So it's just a topic on which you're going to subscribe and you're going to get all of your messages related to the vehicles. And then in the abstract cradle service, um, since we uh, have this method implemented in the vehicle service, we can use it here. Uh, one place, uh, let me just collapse this. One place where I use it is in the save method. So when we save an entity, either it's an update or create, doesn't matter. Uh, after it has been saved via the repository, we use the notify frontend. So we send a message on this topic and then frontend will react on it. And another place where we want it is on the delete. After we have deleted an entity, again, we say notify frontend and then the frontend can react on it. There is these two messages that we send on create and the delete are exactly the same. So frontend doesn't know the difference. You might want to send an action if you need it. For example, you can say, uh, now I have executed a delete method or now I have executed a create or update. So uh, for backend, that's basically it. It's actually quite simple, so you don't need much here. And we are going to take a look at frontend now. For frontend, the things are a bit more complicated, but not a lot. Uh, the first thing that you want to do is you want to uh, install some stuff. If you, ob or if you open the um, uh, Visual Studio code and you are inside of the terminal and you're inside of this modules frontend uh, package uh, folder, yeah, you need to be here. You want to execute these two lines. So I will put them in the description. So it's an npm command to install the sock.js client and the stomp.js because these are two libraries that we are going to be using. And once you have installed them, you want to go and create a file. Let's go back to IntelliJ. Um, you want to create a file called typings. So um, let me open it and I can show you it's in the front end module. Uh, let me collapse the back end. So it's in the front end module in the source. We have created a new file called typings.d.ts. So it's a TypeScript file and we use it to uh, declare two modules. So it's the stomp.js and the sock.js client. So we need to declare these two modules so that we are able to use them. The next thing, I had some issues starting my application. Uh, an error would pop up um, complaining about global. It was not found or something like that. So the way to handle it is to extend this uh, polyfills uh, file that's uh, located just here and add this at the very bottom. If you don't have it, just ignore it. So this is an error I had and I had to fix it like this. Uh, package JSON and uh, package log JSON, uh, they will be updated on their own. You don't have to worry about that. Okay, the next thing that you want to do is create a stomp service. So a stomp service is going to be the one that handles all of our uh, nice and fancy things. Once you have created it, it should look something like this. 
Uh, let me just fix this. And here you can see that it's provided in root, meaning that there is only one instance of this service in our entire application. And it's injectable, so you can inject it somewhere where you want. And it has one public method. So this subscribe method is what we are going to be using in wherever we are going to be using this stomp service. First thing that you want to do is we want to create our socket. So we're using the new sock.js and to import it, you just um, add this line. So you're importing it from this module that we declared in the typings file. And uh, of course it's in a local host 8080 and this part here is whatever you have added to your configuration. So if you look at the WebSocket configuration, you can see that here we have added this path. So whatever you added there, you need to use it on the front end exactly the same. And then we create our stomp client and stomp over and over this socket that we just created. And that's basically everything that you need for the configuration. Then you want to move on the subscribe method. Subscribe method is basically you are just using it to subscribe to a certain topic. You need to provide that topic and you also, if you want to, you can provide some callback. We can actually uh, make also this optional if we want. So um, basically adding this makes it an optional. And then if it's set, it's set. If not, it um, doesn't really matter. Then we would have to do the same here. Um, and yeah, but I don't actually like it to be optional. I would always uh, want to have some callback either for logging a message or something. So uh, I would uh, just leave it like this. So to our subscribe method, we are passing in a topic and we are passing in our callback. And then we are just checking if we are connected. If we are connected, uh, we called this method here, which is uh, using our stomp client created here um, to subscribe to the topic that's been forwarded and in the callback that this subscribe has, we are just executing our callback. So it's actually quite simple. We're just calling uh, subscribe on the stomp client and whenever a message comes in, this will be executed. And what this is depends on you where you use this stomp service where you can provide this callback. Okay. In the case where the stomp client is not connected, we need to connect it. So we're calling this and then again, executing exactly the same thing as we have here. It's actually quite simple, so not complicated at all. Let's take a look at what else did we change. Um, yeah, so when you create the stomp service, you need to uh, provide it so to the uh, app module file. Uh, I can jump to it. It's just here. You need to go to the providers and you need to add the stomp service here. So um, otherwise your application will not start. Great. Now the only thing that's left is the vehicle component. So this is the only place where I've been using it. So this is where I use our uh, stomp service that we just created. I inject it in the constructor and you can see that I added a method called refresh vehicle table. Here previously, we were just executing an HTTP get on the vehicles uh, list endpoint and fetching all of the vehicles and setting it to this array. So this would be what's shown in the um, in the front end. So um, this table here, so this list here, so that's it. And uh, now I have created this refresh vehicle table method, which is exactly the same thing. It's just a method so I can reuse it. It's void and it's just executing an HTTP get and then uh, filling this array with the response. Great. So I have done it on the constructor. When you open the page, you create a component, you want to execute it immediately. And uh, on init, I'm also subscribing via the, our stomp service to a topic. So it's slash topic slash vehicle. Again, this is, um, this is in the configuration. So in the WebSocket configuration, it's slash topic. And this part here is what you do in your vehicle service. So in the vehicle service, in the get entity topic, whatever you set here, that's what you're using on the front end. And um, yeah, so just take care of that, that it matches. And then we have uh, some kind of callback. So this is what we are using. It's our callback. Actually, this can be void as we are not uh, returning anything. And we are just calling the refresh vehicle table. And that's it. So whenever we um, receive a message and we will receive a message when we create or update the vehicle or when we delete it, this will be executed, which will just repopulate the table. And it's actually quite simple. You might notice that we do not have uh, yet updating of vehicles uh, implemented, but that's uh, something that we are going to do in one of the next videos.
So as you can see, uh, creating and uh, other things work quite nice. Perfect. Basically, that's everything for this tutorial. Um, I will push this code to GitHub. So if you have any questions, uh, do let me know. And I will see you in the next one. Thank you.